Good day class. Today we will be discussing automation in histopathology. The use of automation in histopathology laboratories can help to speed up the process of analyzing tissue samples and improve the accuracy of diagnosis, ultimately leading to better patient care. The demand for tissue-based diagnostic services, which account for over 90% of tests used for cancer diagnosis, is increasing due to the rising cancer diagnosis and increased prevention efforts. At the same time, new healthcare laws have resulted in reduced reimbursements, forcing labs to increase their output with less funds and staff. Research budgets are being cut and researchers are focused to choose the most cost-effective solution and stretch each dollar as far as possible. Additionally, a large portion of the histology workforce is nearing retirement age and fewer histotechs are being trained than ever before. As a result, histology labs are under pressure to process increasing numbers of specimens with short turnaround times while maintaining high slide quality and eliminating contamination and mix-ups. In order to meet demand without increasing the staff, automation and process improvement to streamline the histology workflow are needed. Automation allows for a continuous and efficient flow of specimen through the lab. It yields a standard product makes the lab safer for histotechs and reduces contamination. Importantly, automation also decreases turnaround time, thereby improving patient quality of care. Furthermore, by decreasing hands-on time, automation reduces cost and allows laboratories to expand the services it offers such as special stains, biomarkers, and digital pathology. So these are the examples or some of the automated machines found in the histopathology section. Okay, first, alam na alam nyo na yan, microtome, tissue embedding machines, cover sleepers, 2000 processor, cryostat, paraffin dispenser, tissue floater, water bath, setup slide warmer, gusto high, gusto high speed centrifuge. Okay, these are a sample of automatic machines sa ating histopath lab. So, meron tayong grossing and trimming, identification, mga Machines for tissue processing, embedding, microtomy, and others. Okay, this table shows the summary of benefits of automating each step of the histology sample, preparation workflow, and example of commercially available equipment. Also, for example, sa pinakauna, sa processing, ang example nito is yung Sakura Tissue Tech 2. VIP26. So, meron siyang capacity na 300 cassettes per 110 mil. So, dito, greatly na -re reduce na yung hands-on time kasi siya na lahat ang gagawa. Okay. Si machine na standard, it also standardizes the product, improves the laboratory safety, okay, and reduces contamination also. Kung mas maraming check, mas improved siya. So, pag isa lang or wala, it needs more improvement. So, defensya sa ano tawag dito. Screenshot it or nasa module nyo naman. So, yun, basahin nyo na lang. This is just nice to know. Okay, so from your previous discussion, Nai-imagine nyo na sobrang tagal talaga ang tissue processing, mas lalo na pag manual, di ba? It takes 
weeks para makompleto lang yung from fixation hanggang labeling ng ating slide. So, with the use of aut automatic machines or automation inside a Yisopat Lab, nare-reduce yung time. So, let's say for example, ito embedding. So, makakasave ka ng 1.17 hours per 100 units po. So, that is equals to 6.3% na nare-reduce mo sa workflow. Di ba? Gamit ang mga machines natin. So, yun lang naman talaga ang key point ng automation. Mas napapabilis talaga lahat-lahat yung processing. Napapabilis. And then, syempre yung time, napapabilis rin talaga. Yun yung importante, yung oras. Kaya pag start ang um, request ng doctor, ginagawa na yung part. Sinasalang na siya sa machine kasi mas mabigis. Okay, isa pa sa mga advantage ng paggamit ng automation or ng mga machine sa ating Hisopat Lab is nalilesen or nare-reduce ang contamination. Okay, di ba ang contamination leads to misdiagnosis ng patient. Mas lalo na pag may ibang fragments ng tisyo ang napunta doon sa slide. Ganun. So, kailangan mo na namang i-reprocess and then ma-re-examine ulit ng ating pathologies. So, maraming nasasayang na oras dahil sa contamination. So, kaya naman, meron tayong mga machines to lessen that problem. So, you can read the following, okay, yung, yung saang step nagkakaroon ng mga contamination. Let's say, for example, sa grossing and embedding step, na ating tissue processing, okay, evident contamination ito, ay nag-offer sa blocks. Extraneous tissue often found in periphery of the block. Ang cause nito, hindi malinis yung tong at yung workplace, okay? The possible solution is nasa right side. You should improve the standard procedure for cleaning workspace and instrument, instrumentation and consumable to reduce human interaction with the tissues. And the rest, you can just read it. Very self-explanatory naman po siya. Okay, what are the benefits naman ng automation sa ating mga staff and sa ating patient? First, for laboratory managers, the increase of efficiency, low cost per specimen, ability to expand stain and services, portfolio, and fewer errors. For histotech, some benefits niya ay it improve work environment, freedom to focus on challenging samples, and new technologies, satisfaction of helping more patients, and ang safety is improved. For clinicians, faster diagnosis and treatment decisions, better treatment decisions from availability of more informative states. For pathologies, syempre, mas madali daw magbasa or mag-analyze ng mga slides. Okay, availability of new clinical and research technologies. Yan yung mga examples. And for our patient, mas marami siyang benefits or mas maganda kasi mas mabilis na ang diagnosis niya. Okay? Mas accurate na and more personalized treatment. Also, mas mura. Since makakatipid tayo sa mga reagents, so syempre mas mura po sa part ng patient. So here are other benefits of automation sa ating laboratory. So ang sabi ko na kanina, It reduces time and also it increases the speed of workflow. Biopsies and larger specimens can be processed at the same time. Okay? By changing to an automated method of working in which specimens are continuously loaded for processing and embedding, the peaks and troughs can be eliminated and replaced by a steady workflow which can be handled by fewer people throughout the day. Okay, two types of automated tissue processing. First is the tissue transfer type processor 
linear or carousel. Okay? Pangalawa, self-contained fluid exchange system. The basic principle for tissue processing requires the exchange of fluids using a using a series of solutions for predetermined length of time in a controlled environment. So, may oras-oras na po siya. So, kung sa machine, ito time na lang yung oras, then mag-exchange na ng fluids. So, ito yung carousel type processor. Okay? So, dito, yung tissue is dapat mailagay mo na siya sa basket. Ito yung example ng basket. Yung nasa loob. Okay? Di ba, pag nag-grossing, ang pathologist ilalagay yung tissue sa tissue cassette. So, yung tissue cassette, i-insert siya dito. And then, ito mga to, ito yung mga containers kung saan ilalagay yung mga reagents. So, for example, fixation, or malin ang ilalagay dito, ganun, and then dehydration. Maglalagay ng series ng alcohol or ethanols. And then, syempre, isasubmerge doon yung ating tissue. So, depende po sa oras. So, let's say, for example, sa fixation, 3 hours. You know? So, it is electronically controlled na. So, dito mo siya i-input. Lahat ng oras. So, parang i-schedule mo na po yung tissue. Natin. Let's say, for example, Fixation, click fixation, and then set mo yung time. And then sa dehydration, set mo rin yung time sa solution 1, sa solution 2, and hanggang sa matapos. Okay, so, nagkakaroon na rin ng agitation dito by vertical oscillation or rotary movement para mas mapabilis yung processing, di ba? Sa mga na-discuss before, mas napapabilis ang uh, tissue processing by agitation. Okay, isa sa mga nagpapabilis is agitation. Okay, ito yung parts po ng ating carousel type. So, yung mga malalaking bakers or reagent containers, 9 to 10 po ang pinocontain niya. 9 to 10 containers. Basket, 30 to 100 cassettes po. Yung pwede mong ilagay. Ito, basket. Next, syempre yung controls and indicators. Ito po, rotating head and then wax containers. Itong, tawag dito, may cover. Kasi syempre, kailangan ng heating, di ba? May temperature po pagkua. Okay, for self-contained fluid exchange system, a microprocessor is used. Okay. Tissue cassettes are loaded into a retort chamber where they remain stationary throughout the process. The agents and melted paraffin wax move sequentially into and out of the retort chamber by using vacuum and pressure. So, ang agitation naman dito is by tidal action. Each step could be customized by controlling time, temperature, pressure, and vacuum. So, here are the parts of the fluid exchange system. So, first, yung wax station. 3 to 4 paraffin wax stations with adjustable temperature between 48 and 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, yung reagents natin. Dito po sila nakalagay. 10 to 12 reagents. Stations with adjustable temperature between 30 and 45 degrees Celsius. And then, dito, yung retort chamber. Diyan nakalagay ang ating tissue samples. And also, yung touch panel. Kung saan mo ipro-program yung or isi-set or mag schedule ng mga station, dehydration, and etc. So, kung yung kanina, is carousel type ito, is exchange fluid. So, Yung tissue, nandito lang. Hindi sila alis dyan. So, yung fluid na lang yung pupunta sa kanila.
Microwave ovens, specially designed for tissue processing, are now common in a recent tissue processing technique. This technique is first used by Boone and Koch in 1985 because it shortens the processing time from hours to minutes. The processing time depends on the thickness and density of the specimen. Okay, here is an example of a microwave, microwave oven used in histopat lab. So, microwave oven gives us precise temperature controls, times, and meron rin po siyang fume extraction system. So, here are the parts. First, software controlled steering device. And then, ito, example nito microwave oven na to, it, it can contain 14 cassettes per container. Siyempre, may touch screen control terminal din po siya, kung saan yung set yung time. And then, built-in regenerable charcoal filter and connection to fume extraction. Ang agitation naman nito is pinoprovide ng air nitrogen system. Okay, ito yung comparison between tissue processors. Sa manual tissue processors, dito sa left side, automated, gitna, and then sa right side is a microwave PD. So in terms of reliability, okay, ang manual daw is less re less reliable due to human errors. Okay? At saka mas prone siya sa contamination, di ba? Pag automated and microwave, it is more reliable than the manual. Okay? For time consumption, syempre, manual, very consumptive. Automated, syempre, customize ang schedule natin. Ang microwave, mas napapabilis na siya. Ang pinakamabilis na ba? From hours to minutes. Sabi. Okay? Siyempre, pagdating naman sa cost, mas maganda, mas mahal. Di ba? So, si manual, mas mura. Automation, nasa gitna. Eh, siyempre, mas mabilis si microwave. Eh, mas mahal siya. For chemicals like silene and formalin, in manual, it employs noxious chemicals. Siyempre, kaya kailangan pa nang bumili ng fume food. O, di ba? Automation, vacuum and heat can be used. Also, microwave, in microwave tissue processing, not used, so eliminates toxic fumes and carcinogens. So, di ba? Kaya mas mahal siya. <laughs> Next! Graded concentration of solution, syempre monitored pag manual, monitored rin pag automated, kaya microwave not required. Linkage of tissue, evaluated sa ating manual, syempre nagsicheck talaga natin yun. Dahil dito sa ating automation ng microwave, syempre di ba, ilalagay na lang natin siya. So, hindi masyado na i-evaluate. For rapid processors with multi-section retorts, it uses microwave technology, vacuum infiltration, and molecular-friendly proprietary reagents. Okay, microwaves and agitation are used to accelerate the diffusion of solvents in tissue. The microwave technology utilizes operates at a continuous low power instead of pulsing high levels of microwave energy. Also, the retort chamber is cylindrical and the microwave circles around the cavity, taking advantage of the physical principle of the whispering chamber, effect that eliminates hot and cold spots. Tissue microarray was developed as a method to evaluate numerous samples of tissue in a short period. The automated arrayer is easy to use and includes a specimen tracking software system. The instrument smart edits and saves punch coordinates using an 
on-screen display and software roles. Okay, itong automated embedding station, may nasend na ata akong video before dito yung sa naglalagay ng paraffin kung naaalala nyo. So, ito yung parts ng ating mga automated embedding tissue. Okay, may pre-warming chamber siya. Siyempre, may timer. May paraffin tank kung saan nilalagay ang ating paraffin wax. Temperature control adjustable down to negative 15 degrees Celsius. Cooling plate. Okay, so pag tapos ka na maglagay ng paraffin, dito na siya niimba o nilalagay. Workplace, itong workplace. So dito ka maglalagay ng paraffin and then, di ba? Tapos ilalagay nyo muna siya sa square cold spot para medyo ito dito. Kung solidify slightly sa ilalim, then maglalagay ka ng tissue, di ba? And then lalagyan mo ulit ng paraffin. So yung nozzle, dyan lumalabal yun, but mainit na paraffin wax. Okay, may drawer din and paraffin tray. Cryostat, ilang beses na ito na-discuss sa mga previous nating lesson. So, ulitin natin, cryostat is an instrument that has the arrangement to freeze the tissue and also to cut the frozen tissue for microscopic section. First, cryostat was introduced in 1954. The cryostat is a machine in which a slicer called a microtome is placed in a freezer. The temperature may be regulated between negative 10 to negative 40. So basically, freezer siya na merong microtome sa loob. So here is a picture of the cryostat and its principle is when the tissue is frozen, the interstitial water in the tissue turns to ice and in this state, the tissue is firm with the eyes acting as the embedding medium. So, ito yung mga parts niya. Siyempre, may control panel, may glass door, lock hand wheel, yun yung sa microtome, freezing chamber, and also, siyempre, may waste collection battery. So, okay, cryostat. First, cryo cabinet. Okay, most tissue sections properly between negative 15 and negative 25 degrees Celsius. For microtome, pwede kahit anong type, basta rust proof, which is enclosed and operated within deep freeze cabinet. Ang knife or blade naman is low or high profile disposable blades or profile C steel blade. The angle of the knife is kept in between 5 and 7 degrees. Anti-roll plate just in front of the knife. It prevents the rolling of the cut. Okay. Specimen holder. Siyempre, small and round metal chucks. And meron din siyang fluorescent light lamp and electronic control panel. So, ito yung process or steps in using cryostat. The specimens are mounted on a metal chuck and frozen to a cutting temperature. Once frozen into negative 240 degrees Celsius, the specimen is mounted on the microtome. Once the specimen is cut to a satisfactory quality, it is mounted on a warm glass in a warm dry glass slide where it is melts and dries. Cryostat are used for rapid production of sections for intraoperative diagnosis, also for diagnostic and research enzyme histochemistry for labile enzyme, also for non-enzyme histochemistry, and lastly for silver demonstration methods, particularly in neuropathology.
Okay, water bath. The temperature of the water bath is usually controlled automatically by a thermostat. Okay. The temperature of the water should be 10 degrees Celsius below the melting point of the embedded paraffin wax. Okay, usually kept in 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. We have also machines for drying stained slides. Para mas mapabibes yung pag-dry nila, di ba? So, na-try nyo na naman dati mag-stain. So, medyo matagal mag-dry. So, nakita ko tinatapat nyo pa sa aircon. Pinapaypayan nyo. So, ngayon, may machine na for drying. So, here uh, is an example or picture of a slider dryer. Okay, the temperature should be at the melting point of the paraffin. Okay, automated stains have drying ovens as part of the instrumentation also. Okay, may dalawang type, yung linear design at batch design. So, pag linear, isa lang ang kaya yan i-dry at a time. Slides are clipped to the slide holders which are attached to carrier mechanism. Pag batch design naman, it's either linear or carousel. Okay? So, hindi lang isa kung hindi multiple slides. Kaya nga batch design, di ba? Slide rocks are moved through buds of staining solutions. Okay, may auto stainer rin. Some type niya is high throughput stainer and meron rin compact stainer. Okay, picture na nasa left ay yung high throughput stainer and ang compact stainer naman is yung nasa right. Okay, the following are other kinds of auto stainer. So, in capillary gut stainer, force or draw the stain between the specimen slide and another surface. For centrifugal stainer, spray the stain as the slide rotate past the spray nozzle in a spinning chamber. Ang flat stainer naman drops the stain onto the slide while the slide lies flat within the stainer. O oh, diba? Ang talino ng mga tao. Pati pag cover slip, meron na rin machine. Okay? Suctioning mechanism for picking up a cover glass from a stock of cover glasses. It exerts a force into the cover glass to ensure that it is released from the selecting device and placed onto the slide. After the placement of the cover glass onto the slide, capillary action pushes air bubbles out from underneath the cover glass. Mahirap rin kasi talaga mag-cover sleeping sa histopathology. So, sana matry nyo po sa inyong internship soon. O di ba pati labeling? Automatic na rin. Okay, ang advantage niya, easier to locate. Pwede na siyang alphanumeric characters, pwede pang barcodes, at pwede pang logos. Okay, that's the end of our discussion. Bali sa automation naman po, ang lumalabas po sa board exam is yung tissue processors. Okay, mas lalo na yung tissue tech or yung carousel type uh, exchange fluid. So, Yun po yung isa puso ninyo. Okay? So, this is the end of our discussion this sem. Good luck for your future endeavors. May God bless you and always pray. Kasi ang ating or yung napili yung course ay sobrang hirap po. Hindi siya mahirap dahil sobrang hirap. Konting tiis, magtsaga. Sabi ko nga, do not study hard, but study smart. Okay, till next time, future RMTs.